on guys welcome back to the rant and review pro wrestling yeah it's been a minute since i've done a video here on the youtubes but we're back today i've taken uh you know i i take occasional breaks uh from wrestling and sports entertainment uh for various reasons i've been very busy over the last couple of weeks and also i haven't really wanted to talk about wrestling i've kind of been avoiding it for a little bit uh, but we're back now, and I'm going to be talking about a bunch of things that are going on. Of course, we just had AEW Dynamite, the latest edition. The Continental Classic has been underway for the last couple of weeks. We are in its third week, which is AEW's version of the G1 Climax. And the Gold League, which is basically the Dynamite League, um, they wrapped up the third night, and we have a clear division now between uh, who's at the top and who's at the bottom. Uh, we've got Swerve Strickland and John Moxley, both with nine points because they're three points for a win in this tournament. They are both undefeated in the tournament so far. Jay White with six points. He had one loss earlier in the tournament. And unfortunately, Mark Briscoe and Jay Lethal, you know, they're sitting at goose eggs, uh, basically eliminated from the from winning the tournament at this point. And you have Roosh, uh, who's still got three points, but uh you know, there, there's a chance for him to win, but it's an outside chance at this point in the tournament. And usually, I, you know, with the G1, I usually would do updates with the G1, but the Continental Classic is a little bit different because, that, number one, I don't have to do graphics. They do it a pretty damn good job uh, in AEW with the graphics and keeping everybody uh, aware of what's going on and how the tournament works. And they are aware that uh, there is a good number of the AEW fan base, even though there are a lot of AEW fans who came over from New Japan, a lot of them might not have seen a whole G1, and a lot of AEW fans might not have actually watched a full G1 tournament, as some of us, obviously, I have, and some of you, obviously, watching my channel, we've all been through several G1s at this point uh, in our fandom, so I like the fact that they're explaining uh, the round robin tournament uh, the way that they are and what the desperation is for each wrestler guys like mark briscoe guys like rouge guys like jay white and how critical certain matches are each week for each one of them i think the blue league especially what's going on with eddie kingston and daniel garcia over there on collision is a lot more dramatic as far as you know people really needing wins especially with kingston uh but in this one it's more straight laced more straightforward um next week we got the winter is coming event in texas they're bringing the von erickson and everything else um and that's going to be the big collision for the two front runners of the gold league as swerve strickland and john moxley in a match that i am very much looking forward to um they've done a good job this is the weird thing with aew is there's so much complaining and i'll get to that in a later topic in this video but there's so much complaining and people talking about this and the backstage is upset and the storytelling and all this other stuff. But, you know, between Swerve Strickland and what they're doing with the double storyline with MJF, we'll talk about that in a second. Christian Cage and the stuff that he's doing. Uh, Roderick Strong and this whole Adam thing. And, you know, there's a lot of cool stuff. Tony Storm, there's a lot of Tomoa Joe. I want to keep interrupting myself <laughs> as I go through this, but there are a number of acts in AEW that are actually doing quite well. And it's just weird that the vibe around the company, both apparently on screen, behind the scenes, and in the fan base is what it is right now. But there are outside factors that are contributing to that. So the Continental Classic, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I think the way it's set up right now, it seems like Jay White might be able to sneak in the back door. Because I would not be surprised if Swerve and Mox go to a some sort of draw next week. Um, I don't know what the rules are for time limit draws, double disqualifications, and double countouts. I don't, well, I know the time limit draw is one point, but I don't know if they're counting the same thing for a double disqualification or a double countout. Now, in the G1 Climax in New Japan, uh, as I found out, I thought always that if a draw was a draw. But no, if it's a double countout, as we saw with Gabe Kidd and Kiyomiya this year and a bunch of other matches in the G1 this year, those actually don't count towards points. You don't get any points for a double count hour or a double disqualification. So I don't know if they're doing the same for the Continental Classic, but again, we're gonna have to wait and see and find out how that's gonna work out, if that's even the case next week. But next week's gonna be a really crucial, and, we, and for those of you who are new, you're going to start, if AEW plays it right, you're gonna start seeing a lot of drama going on. Now for guys like Mark Briscoe, and for Jay Lethal, who are now mathematically eliminated from the tournament, they're going to be playing spoilers. And it looks like the last night is probably going to be the two of them against each other. And I wonder how they're going to play that. I wonder how they're, how they're going to, if that's going to change 
the trajectory for either Mark Briscoe or Jay Lethal. They sh it should change something for both of those characters coming out of the tournament, but we'll have to wait and see on that. Uh, the whole devil storyline is continuing to go on. MJF still being hounded by the devil. He was supposed to have a tag match with Samoa Joe against two of the disciples, or as Kenny Omega called them, the putties uh, from the uh, devil. But uh, it was a trap that they fell for. Samoa Joe was in the ring alone. The four of the disciples or the putties were hanging around the ring. Meanwhile, Max allegedly apparently got attacked in the back. We cut to the back where he was laid out on the floor with a broken glass bottle over his head. If there was anything that kind of hinted that this might actually wind up being MJF, I think this is the one. With the exception of the fact that the announcers, including Taz and Excalibur, they already kind of are speculating that. So they're throwing a lot of misdirections as to who the devil can be. I saw somebody come up with a very interesting take on it that uh, everything's been about glass recently. They put uh, Anthony Bowens through glass. MJF got hit with glass. Uh, when you think about glass in AEW, it's real It's real glass. You know, you think about one per person, Jack Perry. Um, I don't know, again, if he's going to be the devil or not, but who knows? Who knows what's going to go on with that? But I also think it's very possible that this could be MJF because the way that's set up with the title, it was a little bit too late. Out. <laughs> um, Samoa Joe ran back to uh, help Max because he's uh, protecting Max. MJF also got into it with Hangman Page on his show, so they're kind of throwing Hangman into this now. Uh, we had, of course, Roderick Strong finally got out of the wheelchair. He had a very weird promo tonight. I don't know if the audio was not working for him, but it just came across very weird the way he kept repeating himself, and it felt like the promo got off the rails a little bit. Uh, Rio came back. Uh, she made a surprise appearance after Tony Storm successfully defended the Women's Championship against Sky Blue in a match that was all about the cakes. A lot of cake in that match, but um, it was a it was a good match. I love Tony Storm's character. It's really coming along. They even had the guy from, uh, I think it was uh, AMC Classic Movies or Turner Classic Movies or whatever, give her a, a introduction before she came to the ring. They're really going all in, pun intended, on this Tony Storm character. And I think, again, it's not only one of the greatest things in AEW, it's one of the greatest things, I think, in pro wrestling right now. So we're heading to Collision this week. Uh, Brian Danielson is apparently gonna be wrestling two or three matches in the Continental Classic over the next week because he missed the first week because he had to get the eye uh, cleared and everything else. But he's taking on Daniel Garcia. He'll be taking on Andrade El Idolo. I'm looking forward to that match coming up on Saturday on Collision. Uh, and we also have the re rematch, another rematch between Eddie Kingston and Claudio Castagnoli. Kingston sitting at zero in the tournament right now. And Claudio being his bitter rival, I mean, Eddie's in a win or lose situation he put his belt on the line i have a feeling that eddie's going to win out and at least he's going to be in contention uh on the last week of the tournament whether or not he's going to win it or not or he's going to win his his league or his block i don't know but i think you're going to see him start building up some wins uh and that's i'm looking forward to the blue league as far as the drama because it's not very clear who's going to win that one uh danielson could uh, Brody King is in the lead right now, but you know Andrade is a good contender for this whole thing with him and Miro and uh, CJ. So lots going on at AEW, and uh, of course we get to the main event of the night: Adam Copeland, Christian Cage. A lot of people speculated what was going to happen in this match. Uh, it turned out to be Nick Wayne's mother. She did the heel turn, which was pretty obvious when it happened. When she came to the ring, it's like we know exactly what's going to happen. Um, they, they ran out of time to kind of really sell it. Christian, if you didn't notice, uh, stepped on Adam Copeland's neck. And of course, the whole thing is his neck is is precarious, uh, him being back in the ring and got the win over his former buddy. And they just kind of had to cut away quickly. They put the doctor in there. I think they probably should have sold that a little bit longer, but they just ran out of time for it. But we'll see how they had to go with it. But it was a great main event. I loved it. Um, it brings up a point, though, that I wanted to talk about, and I mentioned this on social media, that it's very funny that this ex exact storyline, which is a very WWE storyline, just with a lot more mature language, um, the whole Christian Cage, Adam Copeland storyline feels very, very much like a WWE storyline from the modern era. And the same match with the same storyline, the same setup could happen in the same arena and draw 5,000 more people simply because it was on a different show. 
And I, I said this, I was like, I don't know where we are as far as the wrestling community is because that this is, and there's been many examples of this, but that was a very clear example of that being the case. We all know that's the case. We all know if this, this main event and this rivalry and feud happened in WWE, that arena tonight would have been sold out. It goes back to my point that I've, I've unfortunately uh, had to uh, accept as a long-term wrestling fan over the last, I guess, decade or so is that wrestling and wrestlers is not really the draw anymore for the wrestling community for whatever reason it's become so tribal that we don't care about the content it's just what logo it is what brand it is and is my team winning or not so that's all i'm really going to say about that now um there's other stuff to talk about with the whole tribalism thing but i don't want to get into it in this video since it's my first video back uh, we do want to look over though at, at wwe uh cm punk uh, conspicuous by his absence this week. I think they're still trying to figure out what to do with him because as has been stated, this was all a last minute thing. It happened at like a week before Survivor Series, the whole thing with Punk returning to WWE. Uh, clearly Seth Rollins is the person that's, they're kind of teeing up to be the ultimate match for Punk as, as far as this first couple months is gonna go. A lot of people are suspecting WrestleMania. They might even do it at the Royal Rumble, who knows? But uh, Punk coming back to WWE has been a huge thing. I think it's the most watched video on their social media accounts ever. And it's, you know, hey, kudos to the guy. I will give Punk credit for knowing how to stir controversy and be a big draw. How this affects the wrestling industry is, I'm not so much of a fan of. And Brian Danielson kind of said something to this effect. And a lot of speculation came out that Danielson was the one that fired CM Punk. That's not true. He was the wrestler, the one wrestler on the committee of three, which the other two were lawyers. One was a AEW lawyer. Another was an outside lawyer. And then it was Danielson who all looked at the CM Punk Wembley situation. And all three of them determined that Punk should have been let go and released from the company. And a lot of people were pointing to Danielson over that. And one of the things that Danielson said uh, when talking about this is that it was a very hard decision and sometimes you have to do the right thing. It might not make you the most money. It might not make you popular, but it's the right thing to do. And I respect that a lot more than just do it, keep keeping punk around against his will because he didn't want to be there anyway, uh, just to keep the uh, crowds going. I mean, that was a bad situation. There was no reason to keep him there anyway. But I, I don't, I, for right now, you know, uh, WWE is riding on such a high right now. Um, they are, they've had a banger of a year and 2023 and now it's gonna see we have to see what they do with it now in 2024 i would say at this point in time they pretty much have the the, the substantial lead as far as you know they're always going to have the lead as far as you know money and numbers and all that stuff is concerned but as far as the quality of the shows and the excitement around the shows a wwe shows are way more exciting now uh just even watching the clips on youtube from what's going on in w and aew and they've got that momentum and now it's up to them to carry it and it is wwe they're experts at this and i i really am curious to see how this cm punk dynamic is going to play out there's already some scuttle button rumors going around i'm not going to give them too much credence I, again as i said in a video i did the other week ago when punk went over to wwe at survivor series i think it will work for the first six months just the same way it did in aew and everything's going to be great it is after wrestlemania it is after something happens in the booking that he doesn't like. It's after he does eventually get into some sort of argument with somebody backstage. It's impossible for him not to. I, I've seen a lot of other wrestling people go, oh, Punk's a professional, blah, 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 blah. I was like, dude, he, you don't, under <laughs> he can't help it. So um, <laughs> when that happens, or I'll, 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 give it, I'll give it the benefit of that. If and when that happens, we'll see how it goes. But my hope is, uh, as a person who used to really, really, really be a huge CM Punk fan, I hope that he is, as Seth Rollins says, he is a different person now, and now he's just about business, and he's just about making the best wrestling shows that he can make in WWE, or especially sports entertainer in WWE, and that we get a really cool run 
for what was pretty much the last run he's probably going to have in the world of wrestling. Lots of great matches up matchups. People are already talking about them possibly doing finally the the CM Punk Stone Cold Steve Austin match that's on the table. So a lot of really cool matches in WWE for Punk. Obviously Seth Rollins, The Miz would be a fun match to do on a Raw. T tons of people there. Kevin Owens, uh, Cody Rhodes. That's a whole storyline in itself and on and on down the list. So we're gonna see how that pans out in the future. Um, there is speculation. I did see a lot of people wondering if this was some sort of master stroke by Nick Khan and WWE, uh, cause Phil Brooks, and you probably have heard, you may have heard of this already, but maybe if, if not, I'll just explain it to you what the theory is. Phil Brooks, remember in Collision said that he was one Bill Phil, according to David Zasloff, who is the head of Warner Discovery, which owns the network TBS and TNT that AEW is on. Now that if CM Punk is over in WWE and he's on Monday Night Raw and Raw is up to have his contract renewed and most likely will not stay on the USA Network, is it possible that Zasloff would ditch AEW next year when their contract is up and replace AEW programming with Monday Night Raw, which probably wouldn't be able to be on Mondays on TNT, on TNT or TBS? But they have even said they might move the night of Monday Night Raw, which would be weird. It's been on Monday night since 1993, but it's a possibility. It's a possibility, definitely. I don't think so, especially given the, the fact that tonight we did see, uh, like I said, the Turner Classic Movies guy giving Tony Storm uh, introduction. So I think that was kind of a signal that the relationship is still good between AEW and uh, Warner Dis Dis Warner Discovery and TNBS and TNT, but you never know where things happen. I will I do want to kind of do a video about some weird predictions for 2024. There's a lot of crap going on. Uh, there's stuff with Okada going on right now. We got a lot of crazy stuff going on in a in uh, New Japan that I want to get to. So I am back. I will be doing some more videos this week. And uh, yeah, if you guys want me to cover anything, let me know. Let your voice be heard in the comment box below. Let me know what you thought about AEW Dynamite tonight. What do you think is going to go on in the next six months for CM Punk and WWE? And do you think that there's any possibility, as crazy and ironic as this would be given the history, that WWE Monday Night Raw might somehow wind up being on TBS and TNT and kicking AEW off of that network? That's a crazy thought to have, but I want to know what you guys think about this. Let your voice be heard in the comment box below. And until next time, I will see you guys here for more news, rumors, and commentary on the Rant and Review Pro Wrestling. Have a good day. Melo Guevara. Mm -hmm. She weighed 8.4 ounces. Big, big baby. Tell me about it. <laughs> I can't, but yeah, that was a thing to do. <laughs>